one question we have not discussed so far is that our timing error detectors are operating at multiple samples per symbol this was the case we saw in derivative ted and we also saw that the early late ted and the zero crossing ted they work at two samples per symbol is it possible to have a ted that operates at one sample per symbol the reason is that the final decisions are made based on just that one sample we have discussed this concept in the discussion on linear modulations of lecture 3 so if the final decisions are made on made on just one sample and everything else is discarded it helps if with timing error detector also operates on one sample per symbol to simplify the computations for this purpose this is a raised cosine pulse shape which is the autocorrelation of the root raised cosine pulse shape we can see that when the timing error is close to zero then this r plus tm and r minus tm this is zero so this is r plus tm this is r minus tm where r is the raised cosine pulse r plus tm is almost equal to r minus tm when the timing error is almost zero however when the timing is not zero then we see an asymmetry this one rises much faster than this one so there is an asymmetry and if we subtract these two values we can easily get an indicator of the timing offset that is enough to drive a timing lock loop so now purpose is to have an estimate of this value and an estimate of this value r plus tm and r minus tm let us see how this can be achieved so if we remember that the match filter output comes from pulse shape then we multiply it with a m minus 1 that is the previous symbol where m is our current symbol m minus 1 is our previous symbol then all that remains in a running sum will be the value of r plus tm similarly if we multiply the previous match filter output with the current symbol then all that remains is r minus tm it is essential that is only true for a running sum where we have the opportunity to cancel all the other modulation symbols a question that frequently arises is why m and m ted works well with small excess bandwidth alpha although the derivative ted zero crossing and early late ted all of these other timing error detectors work well with large excess bandwidth the reason in time domain is that if the pulse shape has a large excess bandwidth then the time side lobes are very small and there is not much timing error information that is obtained by cancelling these two on the other hand a small excess bandwidth implies large lobes in time domain and an error signal is visibly available and the side lobes provide more timing information in frequency domain this effect can be seen from the spectral cancellation when the excess bandwidth is large there is more cancellation that happens in this region when the excess bandwidth is small there is very little cancellation that happens in this region let us take a gnu radio example where the block clock recovery mm is used to implement a muller and muller timing error detector omega is the input number of samples per symbol the output obviously with an mm tet is one sample per symbol gain omega is the ki the integrator loop constant of the loop filter and is given by gain mu square over 4 where we have derived this in lecture 4 on PLLs. Mu is the initial estimate of timing offset which can be from 0 to a symbol time 1. It is best to set this value to 0.5 as an initial estimate. Gain mu is the proportional Kp constant of the loop filter and we have discussed in uh, lecture 4 on PLLs how to set this as well. Omega relative limit is the maximum deviation. This can deviate from the actual value of L when the sampling clock offset is present. As an example, we implement a Muller and Muller TED for a 16 QM modulation symbol and excess bandwidth alpha equals 0.1 with 4 samples per symbol as the input. We can see that there is a lot of inter symbol interference present in the input signal to the timing lock loop. However, after convergence, we can clearly see that there are 16 different points which represent the constellation mapping. 